All right, guys, uh, I do apologize. I forgot that there was more to this. Um, it didn't dawn on me until after I published the first video. I was like, wait, I didn't get to the whole point. So I do apologize. Um, so uh, maybe later on, I'm going to combine the two videos. But for right now, it's going to be two videos. I'm so sorry. Um, so here's how really Hitler came to power. Uh, in 1932, he ran against this guy, uh, Peter von Hindenburg. Now, Peter von Hindenburg was a great war hero, okay? And people knew him as a war hero, and he ran against him, all right? So here's Hitler and uh, uh, Hindenburg, uh, and they go against each other, and Hitler loses. Hitler actually got 36.8% of the votes. Um, excuse me. Now, the thing is, because of the uh, Great Depression, the government was in chaos. I mean, it was nuts. Um, remember, I told you guys about that picture with the lady burning the money because basically it was useless. Uh, and the thing is, the president was putting these chancellors up saying, hey, uh, you got to fix the situation. And in, base, in like a year, basically like a year, three guys took the job and they're like, oh, this is impossible. I'm out, you know, um, and they could not contain the anger, the, um, the, the hurt that a lot of German people were going through because of the Great Depression, and they were taken out on the chancellor and the president, but mainly the chancellor, you know, and so a lot of them quit. So in late uh, 1933, actually late January 1933, uh, Hindenburg comes to Hitler. And he's like, dude, okay, people are going to listen to you at least 36.8% of them, okay? I need you to um, basically be my chancellor and, dude, maintain order. Do something to calm these people down, to reassure them, things like that. Uh, so Hitler, at being 43 years old, is named the chancellor, okay? Um uh, this is a picture of him, you know, at being 43 years old. And if you look, if you notice, look what's on his um, his chest right there. All right, so if you watch the other video, which you should have, um, you'll know about that. Uh, so in January 30th, 1933, this is the birth, truly is the birth of the Third Reich. Uh, and this is the time when Hitler boasted that the Third Reich would last for a millennium which is a thousand years. He's like, this group, this this uh, German, you know, regime, this uh, third reign, you know, it's going to last for a thousand years. Um, again, we've talked about this before. Um, I told you guys the second reign, you know, back in the 1800s. And then the first reign was the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, and this is why it's called Third Reich. Okay. Uh, Hitler basically grabs absolute power right he is just he's he has an abundance of power now um and basically um he does this because of the inactions of his uh, opponents they're not doing anything right and so people are looking to him and he's just basically dominating stuff um and the thing what happened is a fire actually burned down uh, the parliament building in Germany in February 1933. And Hitler used this as an excuse to set up uh, basically the political opposition, you know, and said, look, at these guys tried to burn down the, um, the uh, parliament building. They're trying to kill us. They're trying to kill us. See, see these guys, they can't handle an L, so they're coming after us. And this is how they're trying to do it. They're trying to burn us. We... Uh, we s managed to get out in this and that. Um, and basically, there's evidence that suggested that the Nazis actually set the fire. That it wasn't their political opponents. It was actually them. And they used this incident to kind of drive a wedge um, to their opponents and get people, the German people, to go against them. 
So in March, on March 23rd, 1933, um, Hitler basically puts this uh, act together called the Enabling Act. Uh, it's a, it gives basically Hitler full power and combines the uh, National Socialism uh, group that he had with the German uh, government, how it is. And he combined them together, uh, which again, him being the chancellor and him being the leader of these um, the Nazis, now he has complete power, okay? And in July 1933, a law is passed stating that anybody who is other than the Nazis, who has not joined the Nazi party, they, they can't be an end of the group. You know, you're an enemy of us. It's only us. And if you're not with us, you're against us. If you're against us, that means you're an enemy of the state. And you're an enemy of our country. And uh, so non-Nazi groups, um, trade unions, you know, other political groups, just gone. It's either Nazis or nothing. And if you pick nothing, yeah, you better watch out. You know. Um, now, Hitler told France and Poland that he supported Germany disarmament and peace. Sorry about that. Um, that he supported that. And, oh, yes, yes, yes. I believe in peace. And, yes, we've lost the war. And we should not have an army in this particular section, you know, near you guys. Yes, yes. But in reality, while he's saying the good words, in his, on the backside, he's preparing Germany for war. He's like, oh, yes, France, Poland, listen to me, guys, listen to me. Don't look back there. Don't worry about what's going on back there. Listen, you're right. There should be no soldiers here. No one here. Behind them, they're getting ready. Okay. Uh, in uh, 1934, they leave the League of Unions, which is, again, a group that was formed after World War War, after World War One, And basically, this is when Hitler's really starting to gear up his military. Now, remember, Germany was not supposed to have a military, but he was already gearing that stuff up before, and now they said officially, okay, we're out, and all of a sudden, boom, there's an army. How'd that happen? Again, he was doing that behind the scenes. Um, June 29th, 1934, it's no, known as the Night of the Long Knives, and in which hundreds, hundreds of basically troublesome uh, party members and former SA officers are, are murdered. Basically, anyone who Hitler thought would be a voice of opposition, people who inside the group would say things or try to get out or uh, be a spy, things like that, kill them. So, yeah, Hitler is in a sense kind of cleaning house. Um, August 2nd, 1934, uh, Hindenburg dies. Now, remember, Hindenburg is still the president. But Hitler, because he's a chancellor and because people are listening to him, Hindenburg kind of is in the back, you know, kind of like, oh, okay, well, um, yeah, yeah, that's that, that will make, yeah, things are getting a little bit better. People are, you know, not hungry as much, you know, people are happy now. Because, uh, again, Hitler said during the Great Depression, oh, we'll get you bread, we'll take care of you, this and that, and he delivered. Now, how he delivered, that's the other thing. Um, but he did. And so a lot of people who are starving, who are hurting for a job, things like that, he's giving them something. And they see him as, oh, you saved this. You said you were going to do this, and you did it. Oh, you're the greatest. And they're starting to follow him. Okay? And along with his speeches about how great they are, how superior they are, superior they are than everyone else, it's starting to come around. Okay, that's again, time has gone on, and he's done what he said he was gonna do. People are not starving anymore. People, some people, they have jobs now. So, yeah, remember in the Great Depression, people were hurting, especially in Germany. Okay. All right, now this is truly your final question. Uh, why do you think that Hitler was able to easily move up? to become the leader of Germany, all right? Why do you think, you know, if, so if you look at the whole scheme of everything in two videos, you'll see how at first it was slow 
kind of slow at first, and then things started to pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, and then kind of slow down a little bit, and then started to pick up again. So, why do you think he was able to do that? Okay. Um, second question. What do you think was the most effective way he got the German people to basically love him? You know, so think about the um, the telling them they're the greatest, having soldiers constantly repeat that, you know, they'll, they love him, they'll die for him and the fatherland. Um, think about the promises he made and he quote unquote kept them. Um, the basically the the silencing of opposition. Which one of those, you know, things do you think really helped solidify him? Okay. Um, now, I've you know, you heard me say at the very end, getting rid of those people who say things against him. Because remember, if there's people who are against something, that means when they say their ideas, chances are it might get some people to think, well, you know what, that makes sense. You know, but if you eliminate those people, those voices can't be heard and those ideas can't spread. Okay. So again, which one do you think was the most effective? Okay. And there is a writing prompt right there. Now this is the final uh, slide. Okay. So that's it for it. Uh, be sure you fill out the Google form, uh, turn that in. Okay. And like I said, next time we'll be talking about Benito Mussolini. All right. So you guys have a good day. Take care and be safe.